Maccabim Shani, two Maccabees, four. Then Shimon, now, of whom we spoke afore, having been a betrayer of the money and of his country, slandered Onyahu, as if he has terrified Helodoros and been the worker of these evils. Thus was he bold to call him a traitor that had deserved well of the city and tendered his own nation and was so zealous of the Torah. But when their hatred went so far that by one of Shimon's faction murders were committed. On Yahoo seeing the danger of this contention and that Apollonius as being the governor of Silo Aram and Phoenicia did rage and increase Shimon's malice. He went to the king, not to be an accuser of his countrymen, but seeking the good of all, both public and private, for he saw that it was impossible that the state should continue quiet and Shimon leave his folly, unless the king did look thereunto. But after the death of Seleucus, when Antiochus called Epiphanes, took the kingdom, Yachon, the brother of Onyahu, labored underhand to be high priest, promising unto the king by intercession three hundred and three score talents of silver and of another revenue eighty talents. Beside this, he promised to assign a hundred and fifty more, if he might have license to set up a place for exercise, and for the training up of youth in the fashions of the heathen, and to write them of Yerushalayim by the name of Antiochus, rather Antiochians, which when the king had granted, and he had gotten into his hand the rule he forthwith brought, his own nation to Yavanish fashion, and the royal privileges granted of special favor to the Yahudim by the means of Yahuchanan, the father of Eupolemius, who went ambassador to Rome for amity and aid, he took away. And putting down the governments which were according to the Torah, he brought up new customs against the Torah. For he built gladly a place of exercise under the tower itself, and brought the chief young men under his subjection, and made them wear a hat. Now such was the height of Yavani fashions, and an increase of heathenish manners, through the exceeding profaneness of Yachon, that wicked wretch and no high priest. That the priests had no courage to serve anyone at the altar, but despising the temple and neglecting the sacrifices, hastened to be partakers of the Torahless allowance in the place of exercise after the game of discus called them forth, not setting by the honors of their fathers, but liking the glory of the Yavanim best of all. By reason whereof sore calamity came upon them, for they had them to be their enemies and avengers, whose custom they followed so earnestly, and unto whom they desired to be like in all things. For it is not a light thing to do wickedly against the Torah of Elohim, but the time following shall declare these things. Now, when the game that was used every fourth year was kept at Sor, the king being present, this ungracious Yachon sent special messengers from Yerushalayim, who were Antiochians, to carry three hundred drachmas of silver to the sacrifice of Hercules, which even the bearers thereof thought fit not to bestow upon the sacrifice, because it was not convenient, but to be reserved for other charges. This money, then, in regard of the sender, was appointed to Hercules' sacrifice, but because of the bearers thereof, it was employed to the making of a galleys. Now when Apollonius, the son of Manathius, was sent into Mitzrayim,
for the coronation of King Ptolemy Philomator Antiochus, understanding him not to be well affected to his affairs, provided for his own safety. Whereupon he came to Yafu and from thence to Yaru Shalaim, where he was honorably received of Yachon and of the city, and was brought in with torch alight and with great shoutings, and so afterward went with his host unto Phoenicia. Three years afterward, Yachon sent Manel, rather Menelos, the aforesaid Shimon's brother, to bear the money unto the king and to put him in mind of certain necessary matters. But he being brought to the presence of the king, when he had magnified him for the glorious appearance of his power, got the priesthood to himself, offering more than Yachon by three hundred talents of silver. So he came with the king's mandate, bringing nothing worthy of the high priesthood, but having the fury of a cruel tyrant and the rage of a savage beast. Then Yachon, who had undermined his own brother, being undermined by another, was compelled to flee into the country of the Ammonim. So Menelaus got the principality, but as for the money that he had promised unto the king, he took no good order for it, albeit Sastertas, the ruler of the castle, required it. For unto him appertained the gathering of the customs, wherefore they were both called before the king. Now Menelaus left his brother Lysimachus in his stead in the priesthood, and Satratus left Crates, who was governor of the Cyprians. While those things were in doing, they of Tarsus and Malos made insurrection, because they were given to the king's concubine, called Antiochus. Then came the king in all haste to appease matters, leaving Andronicus a man in authority for his deputy. Now, Menelaus, supposing that he had gotten a convenient time, stole certain vessels of gold out of the temple and gave some of them to Andronicus, and some of he rather, and some he sold into Sor and the cities round about, which when Onyahu knew of a surety, he reproved him and withdrew himself into a sanctuary at Daphne that lies by Antioch. Wherefore Menelaus, taking Andronicus apart, prayed him to get on Yahoo into his hands, who being persuaded thereunto, and coming to On Yahoo in deceit, gave him his right hand with oaths, and though he were suspected by him, yet persuaded he him to come forth of the sanctuary, whom forthwith he shut up without regard of justice, for the which cause not only the Yahudim but many also of other nations took great indignation and were much grieved for the unjust murder of the man. And when the king was come again from the places about Cilicia, the Yahudim that were in the great, rather, that were in the city, and certain of the Yavanim that abhorred the fact also, complained because Onyahu was slain without cause. Therefore Antiochus was heartily sorry and moved to pity, and wept, because of the sober and modest behavior of him that was dead. And being kindled with anger, forthwith he took away Andronicus his purple, and rent off his clothes, and leading him through the whole city unto that very place where he had committed impiety against Onyahu. There slew he the cursed murderer. Thus Yahua rewarded him his punishment, as he had deserved. Now, when many sacrileges had been committed in the city by Lysmechus, with the consent of many laus, and the fruit thereof was spread about, rather abroad, the multitude gathered themselves together against Lysimachus, the many vessels of gold being carried, rather, of gold being already carried away, whereupon the common people rising and being filled with rage, Lysimachus 
armed about 3,000 men and began first to offer violence, one Oranus being the leader, a man far gone in years and no less in folly. They then seeing the attempt of Lysimus, rather Lysimachus, some of them caught stones, some clubs, others taking handfuls of dust that was next at hand, cast them all together upon Lysimachus, rather Lysimachus, those that set upon them. Thus many of them they wounded, and some they struck to the ground, and all of them they forced to flee. But as for the temple robber himself, him they killed beside the treasury. Of these matters, therefore, there was an accusation laid against Menelaus, rather Menelaus. Now when the king came to Sor, three men that were sent from the senate pleaded the cause before him, but Menelaus, being now convicted, promised Ptolemy the son of Doromenes to give him much money if he would pacify the king toward him. Whereupon Ptolemy, taking the king aside into a certain gallery, as it were to take the air, brought him to be of another mind, so much so that he discharged Menelaus from the accusations, who notwithstanding was cause of all the mischief, and those poor men who, if they had told their cause, yea, before the Scythians, should have been judged innocent, them he condemned to death. Thus they that followed the matter for the city and for the people and for the holy vessels did soon suffer unjust punishment. Wherefore even they of Sor, moved with hatred of that wicked deed, caused them to be honorably buried. And so through the covetousness of them that were of power, Many Laos remained still in authority, increasing in malice, and being a great traitor to the citizens.